they do be acting like Targaryens. Good morning, dear friends. I'm on my way to see the Facebook Marketplace man that kept calling me brother in his text messages. And uh, I, I didn't know if I should correct him or not, so I didn't. So he is in fact expecting a dude to rock up and instead a girl with Hello Kitty bows and a Pokeball on the back of her car is gonna pull up next to him. <laughs> Got a top secret exchange going on. I'm meeting him in the car park of a shopping center. Super secret exchange. I will be picking something up that you guys are going to maybe be interested in. Maybe, maybe. And I, I might be picking it up if I can actually get into this fucking turning lane, which I can. <gasps> yes! Zoop! Sorry. <laughs> All right, I'm here. Very, very busy car park. Um, um, I'm gonna say he's in the back corner because I took a screenshot of ah! I took a screenshot of this car park and sent it to him and I circled the back corner and I was like I'll meet you here it's not suspicious at all but I also asked him what sort of car are you driving and he didn't reply to me so I told him what I'm driving but I don't see anyone Oh, is that him? I think I found him. I think I found him. I'm just assuming it's him because it's someone standing outside. Hi, are you, do you have the little horse? Sorry? The pigeons? You do. Not you? Okay, sorry. Uh, I think I might have to call him. I've been sending text messages, but He's not answering the text messages. I hate calling people. I hate it. But I might have to. There's so many cars. Oh, here comes someone. They're going to pull up alongside me. No, no, they, they've just kept driving. Hmm. Yep, I think I have to make a phone call. Mm. Well, um, I, I tried calling and it didn't go through. It literally just went straight to voicemail and said, please try calling later. I don't have a good feeling about this because I, I paid online and I transferred him money. Has he just taken my money and gone? Okay. I just got a text saying my car is Mercedes. Okay. Is that you there with the blacked out windows perhaps? Is but the Mercedes is empty. The Mercedes is literally empty. There's no one in it. Not that Mercedes then. Oh, here he is. I think this might, no, that, is that a Mercedes there? Is that, oh, that, it, no, is that a Mercedes? No, that's a Toyota. Um, Ford, Nissan, Mazda, Lexus, BMW. Another Toyota, another Toyota, another Nissan, a Mitsubishi, a Hyundai, a Kia. Um, far out. Toyota, Mazda, Toyota, Mazda, Hyundai, Kia, Subaru, Suzuki, Ford, Honda, Hyundai, Kia, Toyota, Ford, Hyundai, Ford, Nissan, BMW. Oh, there's a Mercedes. A white Mercedes, possibly. Um, I'll make my way over to the Mercedes. Mazda, Toyota, Ford, Mazda, Suzuki, Toyota, Holden, Mitsubishi, Toyota, Honda, Jeep, Toyota, Honda. Oh, here's another. Oh, there's a there's a red Mercedes. No one's in that one. Ford, Holden, Kia, Toyota, Nissan, Nissan, Toyota, Volkswagen, or Volkswagen, Mazda. Um, bro, I have looked at every car in this car park, and there is no Mercedes with a man in it. Not one. There's a Volvo. 
bloody Volvo drivers. MG, what does that stand for? What sort of car is an MG? I have absolutely no idea. Ford, Hyundai, Toyota, Toyota. <sighs> okay. Well, thanks for coming car spotting with me. Oh, there's a Jeep and a BMW. There's three Mercedes in this car park and not a single one of them has a man in it. None of them. And this one with the blacked out windows is making me really sus because it's like pulled up next to a truck. I'm just gonna pull over again and tell him, sir, I have looked at all the Mercedes, all of them. You are not in any of them. Okay. He says he was apparently in the shops and he says, in fact, the red Mercedes is his. Back we go to the red Mercedes. But there isn't even a parking spot next to the red Mercedes. Dude, there's like an empty corner all the way back there where anyone can pull up. Okay, I kind of feel like this dude is fucking with me at this point because I just came to his car and now he's saying, can you come to Woolworths? <laughs> outside Woolworths. Where? What part is outside Woolworths? I'm just going to stop here overnight so there's no stopping. I swear. This dude is fucking with me. I just tried calling him again and it said, it just went straight to voicemail. I'm, I'm in the spot. First of all, he said, go to my car, the red Mercedes. I went there, then he said, go park outside Woolworths. I'm there now. I just texted him again and I said, do you want me to come back to the red Mercedes? No response, tried to call, phone is off. There's, okay, well, um, I guess, I'll go back to the red Mercedes, shall I? Oh, oh no, there he is. There he is. Hi, the Lahores? Yeah. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. All good? Sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't find you. Thank you. Okay, well, no wonder he wasn't replying to my messages. He was on the phone. <laughs> Here's the surprise. The surprise is, birds that the dude didn't want. He put them up on gum tree uh, with a picture and they were on the ground in a big pile of shit and they looked really unhealthy and looked like the female was sitting on a nest uh, but I couldn't tell because there was so much dirt and everything all around them. Unfortunately some people get pigeons for racing and uh they don't actually care about the birds themselves. They just care about the money that the birds can bring them. Or some people get birds for breeding and when the birds can no longer breed, they get rid of them because they don't care about them anymore. Uh, often people that keep birds for breeding keep them in really bad conditions. Like not, not every breeder keeps birds well. They just stick the birds in these tiny little cages. They don't clean the cages. They just let them, you know, rot away in there. And the birds lay eggs and then they take the eggs away and they'll put the eggs in an incubator and they just make the, make the birds keep pumping out eggs. All right, so I've got the pigeons right here and I'll also grab a parcel. Ooh, ooh a box. Ah. Not a piece of clothing today. A box. Okay. That was a very big scream you did. It was. It was. Yeah. You gotta wait for daddy to come home. Where's daddy? Where's daddy? Cause daddy's the only one that can let you out of the cage without you attacking. <laughs> oh, did a poo. Yep. Very good. Thanks Archie. Bye. So I'd kind of made a joke about starting the perfectly imperfect pigeon rescue. Um, but the second that I typed it out and I looked at those words together, I was like, ah, this is not a joke. This is an awesome idea. So um, uh, I may or may not be on a little bit of a crusade to rescue pigeons from bad situations. And I may or may not be stalking Gumtree, the equivalent of Craigslist, uh, looking at pictures of pigeons that people are selling and deciding whether or not I think they're in a good condition or not. And uh, the ones that I see that look like they're really suffering, I may or may not be going and picking them up. So let's have a look at who we have here. The newest members of the flock. 
Now, with a, with a pigeon rescue or a, a pet rescue of any sort, I, I believe most people rescue animals, rehabilitate them, and then let them be adopted out. So uh, I said to Dan, that's what I would do. I said, if you don't mind me bringing home some more birds, I'm just gonna, you know, get them all tidied up and nurse them back into good shape and then I'll adopt them out. But um, there is a small part of me that's like, but will I really adopt them out? Or will I just keep all of them? I do have a tendency to hoard, but I do also have an aviary that's bigger than two rooms put together in my house. So, oh God, this idiot dude that I bought them off. These birds are big. You can't put two birds this size in a box this small. I literally took a carry crate with me and I, I said to him, you know, I'll, I'll bring a crate. Uh, but he wrapped them up so tight in here that I couldn't even get them undone while I was in the car. So I just have to bring them back like this. How cruel. Oh, that's such a big bird. How could you shove such a big bird in a little box? Hello there. Hi. Hi, birdies. Oh, for fuck's sake, look at this. What sort of person crams two birds this size into a box this small. Look at them. You poor things. It's all right. Okay, so the way that I'm gonna do this, really good that they're not just jumping out. I'm gonna use a technique that I learnt uh, from watching a bird tricks video, and it was called the power pose. So basically, you, you sort of hold still until their body language relaxes. You're rewarding a frightened bird by essentially not bothering them. So when a bird is frightened of you and you can't just offer them a treat and they'll take it, the closest thing you can do to giving them a treat is put your hand up to them and when they seem freaked out, you wait for them to relax. And now I'm gonna pull my hand away to reward her. So I'm gonna come in and see that they're, they're frightened. I've just stopped. Wait until she's a bit more relaxed. Take my hand away. I'm looking through the little hole to see what's going on. Look, they're so squashed in there that her wing can't even close down by her side. That's so fucking cruel. Okay, hi birdies. Touching her wing, and she's not showing any distress. I'll pull away. Just showing her, I respect her body language. I get what she's saying. And her breathing's slowed down a lot too. It's amazing what a difference this technique makes when you're dealing with birds. I've been able to go up to birds in the wild and pat them using this technique. You literally just, you see the bird and you walk towards it and if it sort of goes like it's about to fly away, you just stop. And then once it looks like it's not gonna fly away anymore, you just walk away from it and you come back in a little while and you get a bit closer. Um, it honestly works so well. Ooh. Ooh. Did you see that? He's looking at me. He's made eye contact with me a few times because he's like, oh, you speak my language. And now I have to do the all important head nod. Okay, they understand. I know I sound crazy, but it works. Ooh.
If I was putting my hand in there and trying to grab her right now, she would be so freaked out. Ah, see, now she feels comfortable. Ooh, 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 ooh. It's funny, I... Please don't knock any plates. Well, she managed to knock that bowl and my glasses and the fork off the kitchen bench, but it didn't break. All right, let's see how close I can get to him. Hey, big guy. Look at his poor wing. Hey. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, he, there's sticky tape on his wings. What the fuck? What the fuck? Why is his his wing is taped closed? What the fucking fuck? I'm sorry, Birdie. I shouldn't. Oh, I should stay calm. I should stay calm. Did you see that? How he did that little uh, stretch and fluff? And he just turned in a full circle. He turned his back to me. Today is supposed to be tidy up Tuesday, but instead I'm making a mess. Oh, also, it was supposed to be makeup Monday yesterday, but uh, I got distracted and didn't do anything. <laughs> hey, mister, oh, he's got a ring. That means I can trace where he's supposed to be from because I don't think that that guy that I got him off is the person that bred him because I can't imagine someone doing that to, I can't imagine a breeder doing that to the wings of a pigeon. Oh, he's preening. That's good. Birds don't preen if they're really scared. Now, the missus is up here. Hey. But I'm gonna try and get his trust first because the males tend to be confident. Well, maybe I should try to get her trust. Females are more submissive. Oh, look, she has sticky tape on her wing too. What the fuck? You poor bird. Don't worry, darling. We'll get that off you. Don't worry. It's okay. Just have to uh, get you out of my kitchen first. I definitely shouldn't have opened them up in here, but I didn't want to take them upstairs because my pigeons are upstairs and there's such a thing as the pigeon rotavirus and it's highly transmissible between birds and I need to keep these two isolated until I know for sure that they aren't going to carry anything and give it to my birds. So I've just left the seed there and I've just backed away a little bit. And he wants to get up there to her, but he can't fly. Tapping the seed can often help because you're mimicking the same actions as them and they know what seed looks like when it's flying around the place and they're trying to eat it. So it can encourage them, just like how if you kind of do this in water, it encourages them to jump into the water bowl. Hey, big fella. Hmm. 
And put on a stopwatch. I'll just hit start. And I'm interested to see how long this takes. They were scared and now they're preening, which is great. They would not normally be preening. And also uh, a common misconception because some people would say, oh, they're doing that because they have lice and they're, they're you know, itchy. Bird lice actually don't bite the bird's skin. They actually live off their feathers. So you can tell if a bird's had bird lice because they'll have their feathers have basically been chewed down to stumps in some places. And the lice will also feed on dead skin. And if the bird has a cut somewhere, that's what they will feast on. So unfortunately for Errol, when I got him, he'd had some ingrown feathers that turned into a cyst that then turned into an enormous tumor looking growth on his back, but you couldn't see it unless you parted the feathers enough. And uh, I had to remove the growth with tweezers. It was about that big. And when I finally removed it, there was a crater where it had been and it was filled with lice because where he was all pussy and bleeding under that growth, that's what the lice were living on. So when you see birds preening, they could be preening because they have lice, but they're not itchy. They're literally trying to scrape the lice or the eggs off their feathers. So I need to check these guys. So as much as I'm gaining their trust right now, when I go to you know look under their wings and all that to see if they've got lice, I will lose this trust again, but um, so it's better to get off to a, a good start than just go straight into scaring them. I'll tell you another interesting thing about pigeons. On their back, right where they're sort of uh, rump, I suppose, like the, the lower part of their back, right where that meets their tail feathers, there's this tiny little thing that looks like an ingrown hair. It, it looks like a pimple and like you should be able to pop it. It's actually an oil gland and the birds will spin around to that and they'll rub their beak all over the oil gland and then they'll come to their front and they'll distribute the oil all over their feathers. It helps to keep them waterproof. So, you know, when, when water falls on them, when it's raining and stuff, it should slide off like water on a duck's back. So that actually comes from the oil gland. So if you see something like that in that particular spot, if you see it on their chest or something, something that looks like a pimple, that's not right. But it's just right at the very back. And if, if one of them eventually lets me grab them, I'll show you. But that's so that's what he was just doing just then. I want her to come down from there on her own accord because it's the kitchen and there's a lot of things up there. And if I stand up and try to chase her or grab her, she's likely to run into something. She might knock over the pepper, or you know, she might try to fly up into the glasses there. So I'm just gonna wait for her to come down. Are you looking at that? It's a funny camera, isn't it? Come back. Come on. Don't go off over there. He's uh, gone into my pantry. Been, um, 50 minutes. Oh! Well, is that not impeccable timing? Always try to approach them from their level. It's much less intimidating for them. 
Much easier to catch a breed like this than to catch a, a racing pigeon like those two that Lucy and I had to catch. These ones are a lot more docile. So come let me love you, let me give my life to you, let me drown in your laughter, let me die in your arms, let me lay down beside you, let me always be with you. So come let me love you, come love me again. Here you go. You're an hour and ten minutes in, and he's letting me touch him, and he's not panicking. Beautiful boy, aren't you? He's a beautiful boy. Let me see, dog. Let me see. Why would someone do this to you, huh? Why I'm using children's scissors. I don't know how I can do this without ripping the feathers out. Oh, he's there, he's there. Oh, he comes in. don't even question it these days. They're just like, oh, more birds. Good job, darling. Yeah, good job. Turn around. Oh, step up. Oh, you stepped up. <gasps> step up. Wow. Look at you. You stepped up. Amazing birdie. Wow. Beautiful girl. This looks like it's been taped for a very long time. Oh no. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It looks like it's quite sore. Okay, that's one bit gone. Another bit gone. Layers of tape did this guy have to use? You know why they do this? They tape the wings because it's. 
Sorry, darling. When they show birds, you know, for prize money, they need all their feathers. But if they don't want them to fly, and they can't clip their wings, I would just sticky tape their wings. Let's have a look at your tag. You want to show me? Let's see. Oh, he's an ANPA bird. Wow, fancy. How did you end up with that man? Hmm? So he's got ANPA, which is the Australian National Pigeon Association. Let me see. Come on. Good boy. It's all right. Come on. Let me see. Oh, don't go out there. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> no, you've got to turn around and show me. Show me the wing. Come on. Let me see. Ah, uh, good. I'm just getting sticky tape off a pigeon's wing. He literally taped their wings shut. There you go, darling. Look. Look at that. You can tell how long it's been on there because this feather has actually grown and it's a little bit sort of warped by the shape of the tape. There you go. Her husband is calling her. There you go. It's all done, darling. Yeah. Okay. Oh, look. He's like, you have my wife in there. <laughs> gonna come in? You gonna come join us in the pantry? Come on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So you don't even think about trying to fly up there. Here she comes. Let's see how well she can fly. Now that she's liberated, I am like the breaker of chains. I'm like Khaleesi. I'm the freer of feathers, or well, the, the breaker of tape, maybe. Now, I'm going to show you guys uh, a way to hold a pigeon that is, you know, not, um, not that gentle, but it doesn't hurt them. And if you find a bird, you know, on the street that's injured, or if you need to do some emergency care, like trim their nails or something, uh, this is how you do it. So I'm going to approach him from the front because the wings, when the wings come out, the sort of shoulder, that's where the, how the wings open from the shoulder part up here. So you've got to make sure that you've got that part under control. All right. Oops. Well, <laughs> we should try that again. Come on, hop on. Oh, come on. Come on. Hop off. Oh. Hey. Oh, beautiful boy. Aren't she lovely? Oh, you're beautiful. You're so beautiful, aren't you? Come here. Let's fix the wing. Come on. If you take your index finger and your middle finger and you put that around their legs, make a peace sign. And this has to go around their little legs and sort of pinch the legs into your fist. And at the same time, the wing feathers also have to be pinched in. One hand supporting their chest and see how his little feet are actually kind of like, there's my index finger is here and his little feet and his wings, both ends of his wings are in my fist and my hand is supporting his chest. This is how you can hold them. The firmer your grip and the more confident your grip, the more the bird will relax. So they actually do better when their feet are really supported. Okay, let's see this.
no wonder he's so scared. Last time he was held was probably <laughs> when someone put this tape around his wings. With any luck, his feathers are oily enough that the tape won't actually stick to the individual feathers and pull them out. Now he keeps sort of pulling his legs around, but because I've got them so supported, he can't pull them out of my fingers. The second that they get their little legs out of your fingers, it's over. They just push and struggle and flail. There we go. Good job. Let's see. I know. Let's see. Oh, look at that. You can see they must have been on there for so long. Yeah, this feather's grown to accommodate the tape. There's, that's supposed to be a nice full feather, but there's hardly anything around here. So a feather like that takes at least six months or so to grow. So it's at least been on him for six months. Let's see. Let's check you over. Because I've got him in this position, I want to check him. I want to make sure that he doesn't have any growths or anything. I know he's got lice, I've seen them. Ah, I can check his tag. Ah, he was tagged in 2018. So he's about four or five years old. I'm just checking his feet. Make sure that he doesn't have any growths or anything. No ingrown nails or his toenails aren't sort of wrapping around themselves. He's got a little bit of poo on there, but that'll come off when he has a bath. Check the vent. The vent is the butthole, and that's where lice will lay their eggs. Okay, there's a heap of lice down here. There's so many lice. Where's your little butt? Let me see the butt. Where's your butt? Where is it? It's in here. So there it is. There's his butt. It looks like the lips of a puffer fish. There's a little bit of poo stuck to it which is always very uncomfortable for them because it can pinch the skin. Luckily for him, the lice haven't fully infested uh, like Errol. When I did this to Errol, there was nothing but lice eggs everywhere and it was bleeding and it was painful. Um, he actually looks like he doesn't have too bad of an infestation. A spot that you really have to check them is, if you pull the wing away, right here, so see where their leg is, where the tail kind of meets the body. They get really bad ingrown hairs and cysts and stuff in this area. That's where I found them on Errol. Okay, this is all looking all right. Another really important spot. Oh, is that more tape? Ah, oh, for goodness sake. Shit. Sorry, birdie, I thought I got everything. We had both wings done. I don't think I can cut that one because it's so tight with the feathers. There we go. Whew. Oh, look at that. It's all warped. Let's see. Oh, you poor thing. Poor, poor thing. How uncomfortable. Oh, and it's all sticky too. That would have been so uncomfortable. Poor fellow, huh? So another really important spot to check is here, just here where the wing, like the, it's essentially kind of like the armpit. This is where Errol had the enormous growth. He had some down here, but he had the, the really big one just here. And it's because, see these feathers here? See, you can kind of see them coming through. If uh, if they ever end up ingrown, uh, they're like little daggers that basically stab into the bird's skin. This all looks okay. It's all right. Let's have a look under his wing. Perfect example here of lice feather mites. See how the wing is, uh, you see these little black dots? That's where they've been chewing on his wings. All right, let's have a look at his chest.
he's got some nice silver colouring under his wing. Means um, when they have babies, they could possibly have silver coloured babies. So I'll tell you my suspicion as to how this bird ended up uh, with that man who is not a breeder. Um, he's uh, not good enough to be show quality. So Lahores are supposed to be one single colour. They have to have the one colour that starts at their nose, at the tip of their beak, and it's got to run down here and unbroken by white. See how he's got white just here? This is only supposed to be one colour. So it's supposed to just be this brown colour that comes down here and it spreads across the wings. No white here. So breeders wouldn't want to breed from him because he would carry this trait where the white disrupts the brown. And often birds that are excess birds that aren't good enough to show or breed from, they just uh, send them off for meat. Or they, you know, sell them to people outside of the pigeon community and they don't do any checks or anything to make sure that the person buying the bird knows how to look after it or has the right cages for them or anything like that. So check under here. Lice. Come here, you bastard. Gonna have to give him a spray in the bath. Let me just show you that uh, gland I was talking about. It'll be in here. Ah, here we go. That there, that little nub thing, that's his oil gland. So they will rub their beak across that and it'll excrete oil. Okay, you can go. Sorry. <laughs> He's like, don't touch my nub. <laughs> okay. Hey, he flew. Is that all right? Hop up. Yeah, hop up. Step up. Step up. Come on. Step up. You can do it. Yep. Oh, yeah, big step. Okay. You want to go, go up there? you down without frightening you. Just gonna go slowly I suppose. I'm telling you, the fingers around the feet trick, lifesaver.